Sorry for being a day late, but we are going to go through the Tour de France Femme and Tour de France uh, 2023 routes. So this is the women's, which we'll go through first, then we'll go through the men's. So Clermont Ferrand, Clermont Ferrand, flat, it says, has a decent climb, 7k at 7%. Um, sorry, 1.7k at 7% towards the end, but nothing crazy. I mean, if it's a sprint stage, it will be Vibes, let's be honest. Um, this stage is also like a puncher sort of finish, so maybe... Someone sort of like Cecily which at Ludwig or similar type of rider. Um, going on to the next one, another flat stage, so Vibes. Um, this again is like a hilly stage. Like obviously Van Bluten could win it, but it could also be one for the punchers again. Um, people like Ucha Ludwig and others in her ilk. Um, and then we go on to this one as well. It's not the most exciting st stages so far, but we'll sort of skip through these ones are sort of like rolling flat. Again, another pan flat stage. And then we have the Tourmalade. Well, the Tourmalade will be interesting. Uh, well, maybe not interesting because Van Vluten will probably win it by like four minutes. But alas, it should be nonetheless entertaining. They also go from the side they don't normally finish up. So they actually got the ass pound before the Tourmalade. Normally they come from the other side uh, if they're going to have a stage finish. So I don't think they've had a finish from that side for years, uh, men's or women's. But yeah, so that would be pretty exciting. And then the last day is a time trial, which is good. I think it's quite funny how much time trialing there is as a portion of the race in the women's compared to the men's, uh, because in the men's there's barely any time trialing, and in the women's there's a, compared to the total race there's quite a quite significant amount. But twenty two kilometers looks you know mildly mainly flat one climb, um like a hundred meter vertical climb so nothing too crazy but you know you'd expect after the tourmalade there'll be massive massive gaps. Um, it's it's a steepish climb it's not you know unbelievable but it's it's good enough to it's good enough to separate a lot of people uh, and so i think the time trial will be you know be anyone who doesn't back themselves in the time trial which is quite a lot of them compared to van bluten they'll be attacking early but you know van bluten's the complete rider so you know obviously you'd probably back van bluten for the, for the win overall but i also think you never know when, as she didn't last year like she didn't come into the tour de france Femme in top top condition sort of rode into the race um you know the early days she was missing splits left right and center uh but then she rode very very well on the mountain so maybe again if people can can catch her out maybe stage four something like this in rodez which is like quite a classic um finishing town for the men's as well it normally has like a punchy finish i think this time it's flat oh no it's not it's 570 meters at 10 percent uh oh no that's just before sorry um yeah we'll see so I think an interesting route, I think, you know, it's building on it. I just think, you know, maybe a couple more medium mountain stages, you know, this is obviously a nice medium mountain stage, but I just think like, you know, some more five, six K climbs that make it interesting. Maybe the break, break or GC dynamic um, could improve the race. So now we go over to the men's, the men's doesn't have all the stage profiles. So I'm pretty sure the women's did there, which was nice. Starts in the Basque country. Uh, it's a very weird route in the fact that it doesn't go or the same with the women's actually I didn't show you that it, the women's is like literally just like Pyrenees and clermont Ferrand, and it's very similar to the men's as well you can see there's like none of the Alp Maritime at all um, there's also none on the on the French coast there's not no um, Montpellier stage with the Mistral um, blowing in so you know it's, it is a weird route in that sense and there's a significant proportion of time in the Alps um, in comparison to the Pyrenees, where there's only two days plus plus the uh, Basque Country, which I guess is sort of um, sort of Pyrenees. But anyway, we'll, we'll sort of go stage by stage. A lot of them don't have profiles, which is a shame, or they just have the climbs. Um, so this is the sort of got caught the peak, which is two k at ten percent. Um, but you don't really know much about it to be honest. Apparently, it's just a hilly stage. Um, so that would be you know interesting to see who wins the first stage. Pretty chaotic, I can imagine. Then they got the high skibel. Um, which is also the climb that they use in San Sebastian. Uh, again, it's supposed to be hilly, but there's not really much information about it, which I don't really understand why they do this, but funny, I guess. So, you know, these early two days will be not crazy decisive, but but decent stages nonetheless. There'll definitely be time gaps um, between the GC, but probably, probably minimal amounts. Again, this one, I, I don't know what it is. I assume it's a flat stage, but we, we just don't know. So... You know, I, I don't, again, it's just so bamboozling of like, what is going on? Like this is stage four and it just says it's flat and that's about it. So, you know, we move on. Um, now this is actually a stage profile. So this is stage five um, and this is uh, weird. Like the Pyrenees in the first week, mm, pretty much unheard of recently. 
Um, and again, this is like classic poggy territory, Col de Sude, uh, 15k at 7%. A decent climb obviously far away out and then 7k at 9% that's a classic like 15 minute climb for Pog and he'll go bim bam on that and probably cause some splits and stuff so it's, it's quite interesting there'll be so much decisiveness early on um, but as I said there's minimal time trial kilometers so I don't think it's going to be as aggressive as it normally is because there's just no need um, especially from the guys weaker on the time trial um, and this is the the second mountain stage in the Pyrenees and this finishes at the Couture um, Combosc so my French is really bad but I'll try my best. Again, this is the same uh, same sort of start as the women's race called Aspan Tourmalet. Again, this is the highest uh, point in the race. Oh no, it's not the highest point in the race. I don't know what the souvenir Jacques Gaudet is. I think it's something to do with maybe the highest peak in the Pyrenees. I don't know. But there's the um, Henri des Granges, which is uh, the highest peak overall. And that comes in the Alps. This again is, is a decent decent stage, but the climb it doesn't look too hard at the end. Sixteen k at five percent, like you know, I can't I can't imagine it's gonna be um crazy crazy difficult. Um, if we go through the final, um, so the final climb is here. Oh, it's a decent amount here to be fair, which is quite steep actually, like ten like three kilometers at eleven percent. You know, maybe there'll be some be some gaps as well, but it doesn't look the hardest of finishes that I've ever seen. Uh, when I want to stage seven. Uh, which again is going to be a flat stage so you know just a sprint they'll, they'll be all the favorite sprinters I don't think there's much point going through the sprinters to be honest because you don't know who's going to be there who's going to crash etc etc um, again Le Bon to Limoges probably be one for the breakaway um, again you know you just don't know this is the Puy de Dome uh, which is on stage nine now this is going to be a really exciting finish to be honest because they haven't done it for ages and it's actually quite hard I'd say it's like not quite Velta-esque mountain goat path level but it's not far off like what's that like 4k at um 4k uh, so yeah about 4 kilometers at 12 percent 11 percent that is pretty strong and apparently the running is quite technical as well so then this bit will be ridden hard obviously there's like a gap in between but because it's a long enough climb 13k eight percent like you've got even the sort of bit where it's not steep like the two kilometers either side uh in the middle it's, it's still super steep either side so that that should be pretty decisive um, and there will definitely be a couple time gaps on stage nine, which is nice. Um, again, you know, it, uh, hard mountain stages, but really not not that hard. Um, this again will be one for the break, some sort of hilly, hilly race. When it says hilly, you know, it's just going to be one for the break. Again, stage eleven, a, a flat sprint stage, which is good. There's a lot of sprint stages. You can see this is a hilly one for the break, most likely. Stage thirteen. This is Grand Colombier. I believe this is like a one a one top finish sort of climb only so this will be it will be flat and then they'll go full up here i don't like the colombia i don't think it's a great climb to finish on the grand colombia sorry it's they did it last year when uh not last year sorry 2020 when bernal exploded with his back that was the climb it's just like steep but they're not steep steep they're not steep and like last time it was like a bunch sprint from seven or eight so not the greatest of climbs again and it, like nothing's going to happen on a climb that easy on a one on like a one climb day uh, in the tour unfortunately this stage is also quite lame to be honest i'm not a massive fan of it um it finishes in morzine which is quite a nice place but i've actually been there for a week or so to ride and the climbs like they're not that hard like 14k at seven percent is like fine but like for the tour that's that's not very hard and cold as you plan at twelve k eight and a half. It's it's decent, but then a downhill runner and sort of neutralizes it because like you're just not gonna take massive risks um on the descent. Like none of the guys, okay, maybe if Roman goes for it, maybe he'll he'll put big risk on the descent. But you know, Poggy Vingard, they don't seem like they're unbelievable descenders. So I don't know. Maybe a pickcock goes for GC. Big raid down there. I'm not sure, but and he spends a lot of time in Morzine on the mountain bike, so probably knows the roads quite well. But yeah. Uh, again it's it's not a great stage is it like it's not a super super hard stage and it's also not a super it's like a short-ish stage i think it'll obviously be like, exciting but it's just not like crazy crazy gaps it's not like the giro 240k stays um then we've got the next stage which goes from leger which is just up the little valley from morzine and then this finishes in saint gervais mont blanc um and you know again it's a decent stage but it looks like something you'd have in the Dauphiné or something like that, you know, just like you, I don't know. None of these days are just crazy, are they? Like they just all look a bit 
meh. And the final climb, 7k, 8%, that's not really that long, it's not really that steep, like, I, I don't know, it, it just looks a bit lame at the moment, doesn't it? Like, I was like, well, where's the big steep, the big ones, like, we, we haven't gone to that, to the long ones. So this is the time trial we we're talking about, this is the only time trial in the whole race, and it's hilly, 2.5k, 9%, so realistically, you just can't lose that much time, it's just like, go do, the route is perfect for and that is that mainly because of the, the time trial. Again, this stage finishes in Courcheval, but it has such good potential. This could be an unbelievable, this could be like Cordel de Lourdes last time they did it, and it was it was unbelievable, because then they went up the Madeleine. They didn't go up the Madeleine this this time, it seems. Uh, 13k, 5%, Cormier de Rosalon, that's classic, 20k, 6%, it's just standard, like, obviously it's steep because it's got downhill. Then we move on to like more sort of meh climbs, but Cola Laws is really good because it's super super steep. We'll go we'll go on to the oh, what have I done here? Sorry about this. Um we'll go on to the onto the gradient because it's really really steep. You can see here, so it's like 28k at six percent, which is a big climb, but look at this last like nine ten, nine percent, but there's twenty four percent ramps, it's super super steep. Mega Angel Lopez won last time. And then, you know, there's a there's a kick to the line on Col de Loz. There'll be splits on this for sure, because it's such high altitude, it's so steep, it's it's all the rest of it. But not finishing on it, I think, well, again, it, you know, you, it just allows people to come back on on the descents. I think it'll be an interesting spectacle, but I think it, it won't create time gaps as much as you expect. Uh, this is some sort of hilly Moutier to bourgogne Brest. This is a classic, like, end of Tour de France breakaway for the win stage. Uh, then we've got stage 19, which we're almost done now. I always forget how long these are. And this is like pan flat. That's just a bit lame. And then stage 20 is the last proper decisive day. And it's not very decisive. But I don't think this is a bad thing on the last day. I'm sort of convinced that actually having a soft last day creates more exciting racing than like just one really hard day. Um, having said that, Giro this year, 2020, 2021 Giro. Or 2022 Giro, sorry forgetting what year I mean, that was good, and the stage was hard at the end, and Jai Hindley exploded, um, sorry, Carapaz exploded, Jai Hindley went nuclear, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, Ballon d'Alsace is a decent climb, it finishes on, like, some not very steep climb, 7k, 8%, but hopefully, you know, if it's close, there'll be some fireworks, and stage 21 is stage 21, so what do we think about it then? Well, I would say it's probably not the best Tour de France route I've ever seen. I think it's probably better than this year in some regards. There's a lot of sprint stages, which I'm fine with because I think, you know, it's part of cycling uh, and that's that's fine. But I just think the mountain stages, I just I just don't think there's like in the Pyrenees, I think they could have it harder. Like I know it's early days, but I think it would be pretty mint if they put like a 230k mountain stage early doors. Um, to really see how, what's up and going because then people have to turn up in tip top condition and then could they hold it the third week so i don't know i think the Basque country stage will be interesting hopefully it's sort of just a fight for for yellow the whole time uh, and it keeps on changing hands uh again who's gonna win it i don't know it's like you, you're like there's no obvious like oh yeah they're definitely gonna win it because all the top contenders are so good at time trialing so good at climbing there's not like an obvious like oh they're way better at climbing but lost it because of the time trial like last year like Vingard and Poggy were so evenly matched except one day like you know it's um it's hard to predict but obviously they'll do it Roglic might be there maybe Bernal maybe Pidcock for Ineos I don't really know who they'd go for uh Carapaz might turn up as well he's you know decent chance David Gaudu of course um is has got an okay chance because there's not too much time trialing but again you know we'll just have to see maybe maybe Naido man would be a decent one not not crazy altitude but a decent number of passes over 2,000 meters Benny, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.